All right, so let's get into it. Uh, I wanna organize this a little bit differently than you might be used to if you've ever taken another Shopify course. Um, instead of just kind of jumping directly into product research, I wanna talk about a few things, right? Who are the best buyers? Um, what are some examples of niches that have been successful in the past? Uh, I want to talk about, you know, questions to ask yourself about those potential niches. We're going to talk about, you know, just some things to remember up front, just kind of so you're, you know, set up for success and you can hit the ground running from a product research perspective rather than kind of making these mistakes after you've already, uh, you know, thought you found a product that could potentially be a winner. So let's go through these uh, one by one. And uh, then we can actually jump directly into product research with a ton of different resources, a ton of different, uh, you know, websites and, you know, trend hunter and a lot of different things that you're going to be able to use to identify kind of up and coming niches and uh, specific products to actually sell. So who are the best buyers? Um, for the most part, women are the best buyers. Um, we found uh, in our specific experiments with Shopify, right? They're more willing to engage. Um, normally they control uh, the household spending a little bit more. Um, and normally they are the one who buys the gifts, right? So I personally don't usually buy people gifts. I probably should, but you know, my mom will remind me to buy gifts for my sister and my grandma and all those people. So it's just kind of how um, it works, at least in my family. And it's what we've found uh, from a demographic perspective um, is also uh, kind of reciprocated in our business on Shopify, right? So baby boomers, again, 97 million people are kind of getting older, right? They're used to computers now. They have disposable income because, you know, even though there's millions and millions of, you know, 17 year old, 16 year old kids on the internet, not all of them have credit cards and not all of them kind of have the disposable income to be able to buy things from Shopify. So you kind of want to keep these things in mind with every decision you're making as far as what niche to actually get into. Because although there are a ton of young kids on Snapchat and on all the other like different, you know, mediums and things like that uh, on the internet, they aren't necessarily the ones who are going to, you know, take their credit card out, give you sales and in the end give you profit, which is kind of the point of all of this, right? So, um, and baby boomers are normally the gift buyers, uh, cosmetics, anti-aging, home decor, recreation, romance, convenience, right? These are all very good niches to actually think about and to consider getting into, right? And so then specialties. So we're talking about Christmas, hunting, garden supplies, cyclists, hobbyists, enthusiasts, right? We don't want to ever get into a niche that is readily available at Safeway or Walmart, depending on where you live in the USA or whatever your grocery store chain is, right? We are never wanting to get into kind of the you know, day-to-day -day things that you could just go to Walmart and buy because nobody is going to buy toilet paper if they see a Facebook ad for it. That's just not how it works. We want to get into niches that are a little bit harder, or actually a lot harder to actually find, right? And it's just, you know, you, you need to be able to offer that uh, value that isn't available as easily other places, right? So let's talk about a few niches that we personally have proven to be successful. Um, and I just wanted to mention really quickly before we get into this, you know, be forward thinking right most of us probably don't have the millions of dollars of capital and you know teams of uh, geniuses to start the next like oculus rift and for those of you who don't know that's virtual reality the facebook company uh, just bought oculus rift um, and so you know most of us aren't probably going to make the next virtual reality machine but you know a lot of us could if we're like forward thinking and we're thinking about where the trends are going with technology a lot of us could potentially you know make accessories for it like replacement bands or you know maybe like decals to put on it or whatever the case may be right you kind of have to get creative but you know you want to always be thinking about where consumers are going and then be able to actually get like a portion of that specific niche you know by through your foresight you know, another great one is drones. Um, I have a friend who personally started a Shopify store uh, mm -hmm. surrounding uh, drone accessories, right? So they, re they sell replacement propellers, they sell um, carrying cases, all types of different accessories for drones, um, and they're doing a great job. So let's talk about a few niches that are successful and that have been proven successful, right? This is not an exhaustive list. The, the point of this is not to give you, you know, what niche you should go into. It's to talk about why these niches are important. And once you kind of understand why these niches have been successful, what the kind of underlying causes are, then you can go out and find your own niche by kind of replicating the elements that made these successful, right? So what about an aquarium makes this niche successful. So aquariums are a perfect example of a hobbyist, right? People who, who buy aquariums are normally very passionate about it. Um, you know, there's a ton of different little things that kind of go into aquariums, which is something that you want to be thinking about as well, right? You need the pumps, the rocks, um, any of the, you know, little plants, fake plants, or any of the figurines or anything that are inside of it. There's a number of different small 
items that go along with aquariums, right? So there's a lot of little accessories and little parts that kind of go with it. Um, people that buy aquariums are normally very passionate about it. People who buy, you know, larger aquariums um, usually have a lot of disposable income because they're quite expensive, right? So they're probably not um, very cost conscious, which is something that, you know, is a great kind of asset as well when you're going into a niche. Um, golf is an amazing one, right? Again, there's a ton of little things. I have it pulled up here. Um, you know, there's a ton of little... Uh, just golf ball pickup retriever grabber claw sucker, right? Like there's so many, there's little pendants, golf jewelry is a great one that a friend of mine is actually doing a, an incredible job with, you know, training aids, you know, all types of things like this little thing that is just like supposed to keep your uh, wrist straight. There's so many little accessories that are popularized by, you know, golf channels and um, you know, golf is the perfect example of a target market that has a ton of disposable income and time, right? They've been accustomed to uh, using a computer and using e-commerce um, in the baby boomer kind of realm. It also kind of, uh, you know, plays to the younger crowd, to both men and women. Uh, so it's, it's just a really amazing uh, niche that uh, we're probably actually going to use as some of our examples um, going into things. And so let's just, for the sake of... Um, consistency. Let's just type in aquarium as well. And so we see a ton of stuff, right? Filters, you know, glow in the dark, artificial luminous decorations, right? This is, this is a great one. If you're going to go to Walmart, would you walk into Walmart expecting to, to be able to find a 50 piece glow in the dark, artificial luminous aquarium decoration set? It's like absolutely not right. You go to Walmart, you're going to buy toilet paper. You know, and you know, that's maybe not glamorous, but that's just the difference. And that is the type of product that you want to keep in the back of your mind as something that you want to drop ship. You want it to be unique. You want it to be a specialty item and you want it to be difficult to find at a Walmart or, you know, grocery store in general. Right. So we're going to go with specialty bow ties. Um, a lot of different types of specialty kind of clothing are, are really good kind of niches to get into. And what I mean, and think about the reason for this, right? If you want a bow tie, let's say that you, you know, you're obsessed with like platypuses or something random, or like you, you know, maybe your girlfriend loves octopuses and you, and, and you know, you want to get him or her or whatever the case may be a bow tie with like a specific animal or maybe like a specific city name or some type of, you know, additional level of specificity than just a normal regular bow tie where would you be able to go again you could not walk into a walmart or a sears or any type of clothing store gen you know generic clothing store and be able to get a specialty bow tie in the way that you could from an e-commerce store right and there's ways to go about you know looking what types of you know bow ties that we'd actually populate the store with right because you know if i was watching this i might think yeah but how do i know which type of bow ties would sell right and there's a ton of different ways to know how you know which type of bow ties would sell and we're going to talk about that in depth but, you know, just for right now, I just want to talk about niches that are successful and kind of why that is. So specialty sunglasses. Again, I have a friend who created a bamboo and wooden sunglass store and he's doing an absolutely fantastic job, right? This is the perfect type of uh, kind of niche to get into or it was before, you know, he did it and a number of other people um, kind of saw his success and replicated it. The perfect type of niche to get into because, you know, a lot of people, almost everyone has a pair of sunglasses, right? So there's a huge, it's hugely pervasive market, um, appeals to both men and women. Uh, there's not many uh, kind of wooden sunglasses available, right? At like Sunglass Hut or again, Walmart or some of the big box stores. And, uh, you know, the, some of the bamboo sunglasses look very stylish and people are willing to pay a premium for it because it's not available readily other places, right? Right? So I've actually purchased, I, I'm the type of person that does not really purchase much from Facebook. You know, Facebook ads don't work on me very well because I use Facebook ads so much that I'm kind of like, you know, cynical about buying from Facebook ads, which is kind of strange. But I've actually purchased a pair of bamboo sunglasses um, from a Facebook ad just because it looked so sexy, right? I actually reached out to the store owner um, and we became friends, right? And so um, he was doing a great job with his product photography, right? He took them straight from uh, Alibaba. Or excuse me, AliExpress, and we'll teach you. We'll teach you how to find um, all of the HD images from AliExpress. So you're not have to. So you aren't going to have to worry about you know taking your own product photography. It's all kind of done for you. Uh, so matcha is a great example. So matcha is um, basically a green tea powder. Um, again, with you know specialty types of um, you know health products. Uh, they're, they're a little bit more risky because, you know, health products trend uh, very heavily and then some 
uh, tend to fade, right? But matcha, you know, there's a ton of people who did a great job with selling matcha green tea powder um, via e-commerce. And, you know, the trend did eventually start to, uh, you know, lessen. But if you are on kind of the up and coming and you set up the infrastructure to be kind of ahead of the curve when you're starting to notice these trends, right? If you see it on Oprah, it might be too late. But if you, you know, hear about it on the radio or like a popular organic health blog or, you know, a number of different resources that you could actually hear about it from, and then, you know, you kind of get ahead before the curve really starts to explode, then, you know, you can be in a position where you can have that competitive advantage and be able to kind of, you know, take advantage of it. Uh, so, you know, vintage, retro, futuristic, minimalist, clothing, furniture, accessories, right? So that's kind of a mouthful. Oh, and chalk paint. Um, so, you know, these two are great ones just because, you know, vintage and retro, it's kind of like a seasonal, uh, thing with fashion a lot of times there's kind of a rotation of popularity right so it'll go into it'll become popular it'll kind of fade and then it'll cyclically become popular again so you know vintage and retro and futuristic and minimalistic clothing is just a great one it's you know maybe not too minimalistic for clothing but you know you want to be you want to add an additional layer of specificity whether it's you know vintage sunglasses it just appeals to a target audience that is you know a very accustomed to purchasing specialty items which is what you know drop shipping is about um, enamel pins fishing these are two amazing ones fishing is absolutely a beautiful topic right again a ton of different tiny little lures and you know jackets and uh, replacements for uh, reels and all different types of lures with colors and fish and you know uh, wiring and fake fake fish and all of these different things all these tiny little uh, kind of things that you can send very easily again it has an, a little bit older of a demographic usually with more disposable income and time and they're used to computers and they have you know the ability to pay a little bit extra for these things in a specialty sense that they want enamel pins are perfect small very cheap to ship incredibly inexpensive to create and you can kind of create enamel pins for anything right whether it's like a meme or uh, you know a popular like TV show if it's like Game of Thrones in some way right and we'll talk about uh, later in the course how to kind of go about selling things that you need licensing for uh, specifically like Harry Potter Game of Thrones and things like that um, specialty socks you know there's everyone wears socks you know or you know, hopefully most people wear socks uh, and socks are a great one they've been proven again and again to be extremely successful uh, from a drop shipping perspective right we've seen people uh, create multi-million dollar businesses with socks that have kind of a layer of rubber on the bottom that are kind of makeshift shoes that you can store um, in camping or if you you know don't have uh, very much space in your backpack but you kind of want um, that additional option we've seen people People, you know make Star Wars socks and all different types of kind of like niche socks for you know very passionate fan bases which is a huge huge advantage um, from a drop shipping perspective um, jewelry is uh, you know one that has kind of been very uh, beaten into everyone if you kind of do follow the space as being very successful jewelry is uh, makes an important point right because every time that we want to consider getting into a niche from a drop shipping perspective jewelry uh, kind of plays out the perfect uh, final little point that you want to accentuate, which is, right, the products you sell, you want them to appear valuable, right? You want them to give off kind of the ambiance of value and being expensive, but you don't want them to actually, in reality, be expensive to buy. And jewelry is the perfect example of that. It looks valuable, right? It looks expensive, but actually in real life, you know, unless you're using like real gold and real diamonds, which none of these suppliers would be using, right? It's actually in reality very cheap. So if it looks expensive, but it doesn't cost very much money, that is the perfect kind of item that you want to drop ship, right? Because it gives you, you know, those higher multiples of, uh, you know, return on investment and profit, right? Because if you're buying it for a dollar and you're selling it for, you know, $10, it gives you a lot of space, you know, to pay for shipping and more uh, kind of cost for advertising and still kind of give you that, that room that you really want as far as a profit margin, right? It allows you to, you know, give 30% off coupons, 50% off coupons for new buyers, right? And getting a new buyer, if, you know, you follow the space at all is much harder than kind of selling to an existing buyer so you know steep discounts where you're still profiting to get those first customers is a huge advantage and we're going to talk about how to kind of lure people in with um, big discounts we're going to talk about free plus shipping models we're going to talk about all that in just a few minutes but first i want to kind of get everyone into the mindset 
of what you want to look for in a niche, right? So minimalist walls for men, again, uh, all kind of the same thing that I was talking about before. Um, specialty jewelry, vintage wedding dresses, right? So this is one that I wanted to kind of accentuate just because wedding dresses is not a good niche, right? There's so many people out there. There's so many big companies who are selling wedding dresses, um, but vintage wedding dresses, right? Or retro wedding dresses, or, you know, maybe pink wedding dresses for like the people who kind of want to be a little bit different. Um, you know, wedding dresses is far too competitive, but vintage wedding dresses might not be, right? We'd, we'd be doing a little bit more research on all of these, um, but just kind of getting in the mindset right now. So craft supplies is a great one. Um, especially kind of with the growing popularity of um, DIY or do-it-yourself type stuff on YouTube where people are making crafts, on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, all of the different videos that you kind of see throughout your life of people making, you know, all different types of cool little crafts and things like that. Craft supplies is an amazing niche to consider getting into. Um, yoga was kind of one of the original ones, right? People who kind of made the yoga pads uh, popularized on Amazon, similarly with Shopify. Um, coffee, tea, cosmetics, you know, three, uh, you know, billion dollar companies, uh, or excuse me, billion dollar kind of niches to get into have become a little bit more uh, competitive in uh, recent times. But if you can find, you know, your specific niche, maybe it's, uh, you know, vegan tea for, you know, kids or I mean, that, that's probably not a great example. But, you know, you could do like a uh, specialty or, oh, special tea. That's kind of a nice name, you know, that I just thought of. So nobody steal that. But, you know, if you can think about a, 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 an additional kind of narrower, like we've talked about multiple times already, to, you know, find your niche within a niche uh, of tea or coffee or cosmetics or whatever it is, right, that is how kind of you you really differentiate yourself. So, you know, a, a good example is on, The Honest Company, right? Jessica Alba and um, I forget her business partner's name. They kind of turned a, uh, you know, uh, environmentally friendly line of products into a billion dollar company, right? And it kind of came out later that they weren't always being the most environmentally friendly, friendly, but you know, they did a great job of marketing, right? The kind of like socially conscious person who wanted to be better about the environment, not pollute, not like produce so much waste. They were spending a little bit extra money, kind of spending money with the honest company because they, you know, felt better about not destroying the earth. So they found their niche within a niche of, you know, environmentally friendly diapers and all the different things that they were selling. So that's just a kind of an example that came uh, right off the top of my head. So um, this is Trend Hunter. We're going to look more into all of these websites um, in uh, later videos, but I just wanted to show you guys kind of really quickly. Trend Hunter is a great website that I use all the time, um, and it basically just shows all types of trending products. All right, so Eco Bamboo Compacts, um, you know, this is amazing, like wh whether it's like a bamboo coaster or, um, you know, refillable lip balm. Some of the stuff I would just never think about. Oh, that's funny. Sustainable cosmetics containers, right? So this is environmentally friendly, like we were just kind of saying. Um, athletic Australian streetwear. So that that is a beautiful niche to get into, right? And we, well, the beauty of drop shipping is, you know, e-packet, which we'll talk about later. The fastest way of shipping um, goes to a number of different countries, and I would assume Australia is one of them. We'll we'll talk about that in a second. So golden chocolate bars, right? Um, you know, 100 days before the Winter Olympics, playing off, you know, real, uh, real world events like the Olympics or, you know, the World Cup or whatever, the people who are kind of playing off that and, you know, recognizing the huge marketing presence of these multi-million or billion dollar kind of events and then, you, you know, capturing a piece of those events through their Shopify stores um, are people who are doing a great job, right? Seasonality, uh, selling Halloween clothing or Halloween, uh, whatever it was, right? Halloween just passed. Uh, recently, but you know, people are making millions and millions of dollars, uh, kind of taking advantage of Christmas every year and things like that. So, co-branded knee highs, uh, collaborative designer pop-ups, right? Pop-ups in the windows, right? This is this is amazing. I mean, I could go through this for hours, so we're not going to look too much into that because I'll get distracted. But um, so let's let's talk about questions to ask yourself about a potential niche that you're considering. So let's say that you kind of you know came into let's just say that you wanted to do enamel pins you're going to do like a whole shopify niche store around enamel pins maybe you're going to do pigs because you love uh, micro pigs and you know that people are out there and they also love micro pigs so you decided to make an entire line and store of enamel pins surrounding micro pigs so questions to ask yourself about this niche are the products easily available from a supplier so this is a great one right so let's say that we were um you know Trying to figure this out, so we would just type in micro pig, micro pigs, 
and see what was available here, right? So there's a ton of different like stuff here, you know, so they're obviously uh, available, pretty cheap. Um, and you know, these prices are not the kind of one size fits all. If you order more pieces or you start to do like a larger volume, these will um, go down. And we're gonna talk about how to, you know, negotiate those prices down to get the best possible prices. Um, and again, enamel pins. Um, you know, AliExpress has the capability of creating basically whatever you want, right? And so we're gonna, you know, talk about how to kind of identify which of these suppliers are the best, right? Two thousand seven hundred orders of these, uh, and we could find, I, you know, this this is a kit, this is a cat, but I'm sure that they'd have the capability of making, you know, whatever print that you actually uh, kind of gave them, and so. Yes, the products would be easy, easily available from a supplier. Are products in demand in this chosen market, right? You know, we'd be able to uh, use Google Trends and uh, a couple of other um, different sources to see, you know, the exact search volume that people are looking for um, from a buyer perspective related to our niche, which we'll talk about later, right? Are people willing to pay for the product in this chosen niche? Um, you know, 2,700 orders, 2,700 orders, you know, a lot of orders, thousands and thousands of orders on all of these different things. So we do know that people are paying for enamel pins, especially if you're doing kind of your research correctly as to what niche to get into and things like that. Um, do you have an interest in this product? Yes, I absolutely love micro pigs personally. So I do have an interest in this product. It just makes things easier, right? You know, if your interest is in making money and you find a niche that you've proven to, to work and, you know, even if it's not what you're hugely passionate about, you know, earning passive income so you can do what you're hugely passionate about is one of my passions, right? And so, you know, I always suggest that people have some interest, but if you find a killer niche and it's not the most interesting thing in the world to you, you know, don't ditch it just because of that. Um, can the products be obtained at a low enough cost and sold at a high enough profit margin, right? And so you want to aim for a 50% profit margin here. So, you know, we'd maybe look at some enamel pin stores. Maybe we'd type in, you know, enamel pin Shopify. There are ways to find Shopify stores for any keywords, which we will talk about um, later on. And so you'd be able to look at people's Shopify stores. And I guarantee you that I could find this exact pin on a Shopify store right now. And I bet you that it would cost $9.95. And I bet you that they're paying 50 cents per. So that's obviously, you know, a you know 20 times multiplier uh, you know not factoring in shipping and things like that but that would be a healthy enough margin that you'd be able to you know do big discounts to get people in the door you'd be able to you know uh, have enough uh, advertising budget to be able to get the sales and get the you know people into your email lists and get them into your uh, drip campaigns to give them you know future offers for discounts and things like that if they purchase more or you know there's all types of things which we're going to talk about in the scaling uh, section of the course. Um, could you leverage into a brand or create an informational digital product for the niche product, right? And so absolutely you could you could leverage an enamel pin uh, collection into a brand, right? You could call it like pins for like winning pinning or whatever it doesn't matter right like I just thought of that in one second pins that win uh, you could easily make that into a brand um, and could you create digital products um, for the niche product uh, this is one that I just personally like uh, to consider this isn't this isn't like a necessity by any means but um, you know if you could create a digital kind of uh, product for it so let's say you could launch a YouTube channel all about enamel pins right how to make them you know the best uses for them how to take care of them you know your favorite or the rarest ones you found or whatever right so if you can kind of form a following of people who are interested or maybe a Facebook group about it or whatever, it helps immensely in forming a brand. Um, is the product a temporary trend, right? So the best way to look at this is just Google Trends, which we'll talk about later on, uh, to see whether or not you know people are interested in enamel brand, uh, enamel pins all year round, or whether they're only interested in enamel pins like maybe only during Q4 or during December or things like that. And so the last part of this specific uh, video is going to be just things to remember, right? So cars are a niche. You don't want to get into cars, right? Cars are, um, you know, a very widely spread kind of thing. They're, they're not what we would want to get into for drop shipping. You want to get into what I call a sub niche, right? So maybe instead of just making a Shopify store selling, you know, car parts or whatever, you'd want to get into, you know, selling Mustang interior parts and wheels, like maybe, uh, you know, rims for vintage Mustangs is a much more, uh, you know, specific niche or sub niche that you'd actually be able to kind of carve out your specific, you know, portion of the overall profits, right? Again, stay away from commodities. We talked about this before. You're not going to be on Shopify selling toothpaste. 
or toothbrushes or toilet paper. Maybe you could sell novelty toilet paper with like Donald Trump's face on it. And you know, no offense to anyone who likes Donald Trump. Um, I'm kind of indifferent. Uh, but you know, toilet paper, uh, novelty toilet paper actually is kind of a large seller. So I've seen Hillary Clinton on toilet paper. I've seen Justin Bieber. I've seen Donald Trump. And I've seen you know those selling a number of different uh, you know a reasonably high volume on Amazon. So toilet paper would be a no, but maybe novelty toilet paper would be a yes. Similarly with toothbrush, uh, toothpaste, right? I've seen, you know, Tom's did a great job of carving out kind of the organic toothpaste niche in the toothpaste realm. And so, you know, stay away from just generic commodities, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't uh, do it if you get creative, right? It's all about utilizing your own abilities, your own experiences to kind of get creative and create, um, you know, carve out your sub niche in these larger niches, right? Um, so higher ticket product, higher ticket products usually have higher profits, right? There's less orders to track. Um, there's less help desk and customer service issues, right? So the more expensive that we can have each individual product, it's kind of the better. Um, this isn't a, there is no one size fits all for all of this, right? We ship things that are big and heavy and expensive. We ship things that are small and light and cheap. Um, it kind of depends on you know what you can find, what you can make work. The point of all of this is to understand the process and then be able to test a ton of stuff and then just scale the things that work and you know stop the things that don't. Right, you want your average order to be fifty to seventy-five dollars, and again, fifty fifty percent uh, profit margin is normally what I shoot for. Um, fifty to seventy-five dollars is good, and there's a lot of ways to kind of incentivize people to do this, like free shipping if your cart value is fifty dollars. And I'll show you exactly how to set that up in Shopify. Um, you know, from a pragmatic perspective or practical perspective, um, average weight, right? Lighter is better. We're going to talk about this more later, but e-packet shipping is just the best way to ship as a drop shipper. One of the biggest problems with drop shipping is the, the delivery times, right? So a lot of people have kind of gotten used to like the two day delivery or three day delivery with Amazon Prime. Um, you know, with drop shipping, ePacket is a 12 to 20 day shipping time, and that's about the best that you can expect, right? And so this is kind of the trade off. If you're gonna do Amazon FBA, which I also teach, right? There's more upfront costs, but again, Prime shipping is a huge reason that people will, you know, pay an additional uh, cost to get it faster. But with drop shipping, the fastest you can expect to get your products to uh, your customers is 12 to 20 days, and that's with e-packet shipping, which is the fastest version of shipping. And so to qualify for e-packet, um, your products have to be less than 4.4 pounds and have to be less than $400 in value. And we'll talk about that again, but it's just something to keep in mind, right? And so the more random, the better. So we're talking about, you know, train horns, specialty Christmas ornaments, maybe like they're, you know, rude Santas with like his middle fingers up or something for like the messed up people out there like me who have weird senses of humor. Um, Halloween costumes is a good one. Specialty items like, you know, random flags, obviously not the American flag that's very easy to buy, but maybe like if people wanted, uh, you know, like a... Estonia flag might be a little bit harder. So I've seen, you know, specialty stores and Shopify stores that sell things like that. Um, you know, you kind of, you uh, weird and embarrassing is good for this, right? Because people don't want to go into Walmart and buy like, you know, sexual toys or things like that, or, you know, nail fungus medicine or things like for, for baldness, right? People don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to admit to the cashier that they're buying condoms or whatever it is, right? And so weird and embarrassing can be good. Oh, so we already talked about this. You don't want anything that's available at Walmart, really. And uh, to avoid ridiculous shipping times, like we said, you want to choose what's called e-packet shipping, which is 12 to 20 days rather than, you know, what can be actually be 40 days via like China Post and things like that. So the product requirements for e-packet shipping, like we said, is 4.4 pounds and can't exceed $400 uh, dollars in value. So those are two things to keep in mind. Um, and e-packet ships to these 30 countries, right? So we're not going to read off all of these, but Australia, like we were talking about with the Australian street clothes, is one of them, right? Obviously, the USA, Canada, some of the larger companies, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Switzerland, right? So the USA. So these are kind of the ones that are available. And it's it's quite easy. Just just Google search, you know, um, e-packet eligible countries if you forget these or you want to just make sure that they ship to the country that you're interested in because targeting Facebook ads for you know Croatia or whatever or Denmark you know the country specifically of people who speak English or maybe you have an advantage out there you're watching the course and you speak German right maybe you want to only target the German market and ship straight from China and that's kind of you know the competitive advantage that you have from a marketing perspective right so it really all kind of starts to play together once you guys you know we get farther into this and we're going to talk about all of this in the Facebook ad portion of this right but but really, I think a lot of you probably are starting to get the beauty of how, you know, some of these markets are 
very less competitive or so much less competitive. The ad costs are much lower, right? And it does not make a difference. You can ship these enamel pins to Germany for the exact same price as you can ship them to the USA, right? So this is not all to the USA. You can ship to any of these countries very quickly, um, kind of all in the same way. And so it's really the beauty starts to kind of work together when everything's iterating. You're only, you know, you're only advertising to Estonia uh, because maybe you speak the language or maybe you're only tr uh, targeting people in Estonia that speak English and they also like, you know, the popular enamel pin companies. And so really, I think a lot of you are probably kind of starting to get excited. I'm obviously excited. Um, I can't really hide it. This this type this type of thing really gets me, uh, you know, it gets me pumped up because it's so much fun, kind of figuring all of this out. And we're gonna go through all of this, and we're gonna teach you everything. But that is, you know, kind of the summary, the quick summary. Maybe not that quick, but that's the quickest summary to remember all of these things, right? And. I would always recommend people to kind of go through the entire first module, right? Take notes for yourself. It's just, it helps taking your own notes. Um, once you've kind of taken notes, maybe come back to um, any of the videos again and watch them again if you need a reminder, right? But what I suggest is going through the whole first module, taking notes, and then kind of just going onto AliExpress, going onto all of the other different um, kind of websites and resources that we're gonna go through, and then just do it yourself, right? If you need to rewatch things, do it, because it's, it's yours forever, right? And so I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's kind of the very first part about identifying niches, right? Who we want our target buyers to be, things to remember, right? Are you gonna be able to find suppliers for these products and what type of niches you wanna get into and why? So we'll see you on the next one.